you raise your child and you don't give them a relationship with Jesus, they will defect and get a relationship with this world. James 4.4, 4, whoever is a friend of the world is, is the enemy of God. That's not a statement that is God is being harsh that says, well, if you're friends with them, you won't be friends with me. That's not what God is saying there. What God is saying, if you get entangled with the world, it will wrap itself around you that you will forget about me. And if God can't influence you, then God can't help you. And the first influence in every child's life is dad and mom. And if dad and mom does not have the relationship with God, how can you give something that you don't have? This is why every parent needs to understand that while you're dedicating your child today, you have a heavenly father that loves you and wants to help you and wants to empower you. He is saying, I'm right here. Invite me into your life. We will build a relationship together and I will help you invest in your child. But don't think you can raise your child by yourself. Don't think you can do it by yourself. You need to learn what it is to pray and ask for strength when the tension comes into the home. And when that tension comes into the home, I want you to understand, parents, that the tension, if it is not dealt with appropriately, will open the door for the devil to come into your home. If you want to keep the devil out of your home, then keep the tension out of the home. James chapter 3 verse number 16 says where there is envy and there is strife it says that there is every evil work possible well, envy and strife does what? it gives life to anything evil can be conceived in your home you've got to deal with that you've got to deal with that and say I'm not going to keep tension and strife you can't allow yourself to be overwhelmed with your feelings in response to your feelings in your parenting. Because your feelings want to respond to an immediate action for a state of how what you're experiencing and your investment, everything you invest in that child is going to be lasting. Death and life is found in the power of the tongue. When you speak to your child and you say, I love you, and you say you're worth the world to me, and you're incredible, and you're, in be and you're beautiful, you're making an investment in your child. It's, it's shaping them on the inside of them. They come to you from God in the state of innocence like a piece of clay, and you have to be the, the sculpture. You've got to sculpture that child. You don't want the devil to put their hands on the child. Because whatever the devil touches, he mars and disfigures. You want to make sure, no, I'm in covenant with God. You're not going to touch my child. I'm going to shake them. Jesus loves you. Jesus is God. Jesus died for you. Go to church. Make sure you read your Bible. You shake them. You make these indelible marks on them. That they know who Jesus is. You show them how to pray. That they learn how to pray. The love that you have for your child today. Will give you the fortitude to fight and to move forward. But in order to persevere in the fight. You need God to back you. And God cannot back what is wrong. The Bible says if you take truth and you work it in unrighteousness, it is very specific that the judgment of God follows. Oh, you have the wonderful opportunity today to hear what I'm saying soberly, that it would get a hold of your heart, for it was just... 19 years ago that I dedicated my first child 
to the Lord. It was 19 years ago that I had the privilege to do exactly what you're doing and stand there and say that I'm going to raise this child and train this child in the way that she should go. And I made that vow to God with conviction. And I told the devil, you will not touch my child. I will not bend. I will not compromise. And each child that I had, I did the same thing. But it wasn't just words to me. It's been a fight. A fight that I refuse to came in and quit. A fight that I refuse to allow the devil to touch them. <laughs>